Hello and welcome to another very special episode of Peace, Love, and Guns. My name is Will and today we're taking a look at the Spangler's Neutrona Wand. It's going to be uh, the second or third time we've looked at this guy. It's gone through some changes since you first saw it. And uh, we can go over that in a later video. This video is going to be how to install an audio aux cable into a Spangler Neutrona Wand. So what you're going to need is your Spangler Neutrona Wand, some sort of double-sided male, aux cable with a 3.5 millimeter jack and then a 3.5 millimeter jack uh, itself and uh, this is part number x001 xwphm victor v so that is uh, something that i'll put in the link to the description and uh, you can take a look at that if you're interested in doing this mod uh, we're gonna need some basic hand tools i'm gonna have a lighter just in case uh, some wire strippers. I've got a pair of flush cutters here as well as a drill with a fine drill bit. We're going to drill out the holes on the bottom. There are little plugs covering up the screws to remove this portion of the wand. We will need a soldering iron. Mine is a Heiko 888. Um, it is a $100 soldering iron with a stand and everything. Don't let that intimidate you. You can do what we're going to do with a Walmart uh, soldering iron. We're going to need a little bit of wire. So I've got a little bit of wire here. This is just pulled out of a spare section of Cat6 cable. So you just remove one of the twisted pairs and then there you go. I've got a selection of screws and drill bits just for giggles. I selected a fine one. We're going to try and reuse these plugs. So we're going to use this screw with a fine thread, screw it into the hole that we make and try and remove those. And um, of course I've got a multi-tool which is going to give us a little bit of prying power as well as uh, just be my screwdriver because I don't feel like going out to the car and grabbing a screwdriver. So let's go ahead and get into some of that here. First we've got to remove the V-hook, two Phillips head screws. Alright, and that gives us access here. And we're going to screw out these four first. Got my drill. I'm just going to place in the center here. I'm going to leave a pressure indentation so that my drill bit tracks easier. Got a little bit of a dot there in the center, and here we go. And that feels like it just kind of gave. It feels like these might be hollow. I'm just kind of screwing this in by hand. The plastic is giving just a little bit. You can see. All right, that's all that took. And as you can see, these are hollow. And we just put a little bit of a uh, little bit of a hole in there. I felt it give through, and we're just going to retain that, and we'll be able to reuse it. And we can now see. The Phillips head screw that is beneath. And, and it just pulls out. It's very easy to pull those out. And as you see, we're not really damaging them a whole lot. I can probably go over that with some hot glue or something and uh, fill that back in, reuse that plug later. There we go. All right, four plugs out. And now we need to get in there with a smaller screwdriver set. These iFixit tools are awesome. Everybody should get a set of these. All the tamper-proof garbage that they put in products now to keep you from working on your own stuff. <clears throat> Comes with some regular Phillips heads and flat heads and Allen keys and Torx and all kinds of stuff. Very thorough. Highly recommend everybody get one of those. They also make all kind of like uh, spudgers and tools for getting into cell phones and stuff like that. If you do your own work and replacing your own batteries and stuff. And four screws. 
and I don't see another one, so this should just come off. There we go, and that is that piece off. I'll just set that back there, and now I see one, two, three, four, five, six screws visible. Having more tools can never be underestimated, so here's another small screwdriver set. And uh, we need something with a little bit more length to it to get down in there. That's what she said. And now we can get down in there. One thing I've noticed about this is that sound for the emitter tube coming out, that really likes to activate on its own, which is annoying. Something obviously is weird going on with the switch that's in there. Let's remove this one here as well. Okay. All right, and that's that. The screw doesn't want to come. Why you know come? And then we're into it. <clears throat> and there's our mechanism there for that. And what we want to get at is the speaker unit here, which just pulls out. It's just recessed along these tracks. And uh, there's a bit of goop here, but there's two additional solder points. So we're gonna hit that with a little bit of solder, put a couple nice dobs of solder on there, and then we're gonna trail some wires to the handle. So I'm gonna go ahead and take the batteries out at this point. And we can go ahead and get involved with that situation. So a lot of people have issues with the wires breaking on these. They say not to let this tube come out and smack. You can actually see right here on this wire, if I can pull that out some, you can already see where my yellow wire right there is getting smashed. It's almost as though this tube is getting hit by this plastic piece right here and it's cutting the wire so that ain't no good at all not at all hmm. so i had already had the idea that i would go and robustify some of this uh, when i open this up but uh, i gotta kind of figure out what i'm gonna do about that <laughs> and this bar makes contact with the speaker just a little bit as it goes by. Huh. These were not made to last. I hate to say it. Getting sidetracked here. I want this barrel emitter tube assembly off because I want to see what's inside. I did already go ahead and peel this off. You just have to work it up and over and it pops off. Let's see if we can get this whole thing out of there. We would be able to. All right, we're gonna break something. Okay. So that part just pops right out. And we have wires going every which way in there. I'm tracing this wire here, the white wire traces back to this point. So let's go ahead and lift that off. I'm gonna use my flush cutters. Give me some more room to work here. Just use the flush cutters, but not cut it. We're gonna just pop this one off of the board. 
Man, nothing about this looks sturdy at all. There we go. And it is just a tangle of wires. Like, no care at all was given to putting these in in any way that lasts. So you want to be real careful moving these around. We've got some glue in here, which I might break the wires just pulling the glue off. There we go. It's surprising they used any glue at all. Typically you put glue like that so that it can take the weight. It makes it a little bit more vibration resistant. If we let these wires be a little bit freer. All right. So there's our grip assembly with the little wire there. I don't think I broke this. And it looks relatively well intact. This piece, however, has seen better days. This is all solid, so we're not gonna do a whole lot about that. And this wire, if you can see that, is already breaking right there. And it's because it's getting chopped right up against this piece of plastic, and this is actually kind of sharp, so it's just, every time you launch that tube, it's using, it's beating it with the, with this piece of, uh, it's either with this plastic piece, this hard plastic piece, squishing the wire between that and the tube. And uh, that's that's no good. That's not long for this world. And I'm not sure what to do about that, aside from go ahead and replace it. All right, yeah. I was hoping this would be a short video, but I'm not sure what we're gonna do about that. It's a little disappointing. All right, well, there's the grip portion of it. You can see the vibration motor is down in there. I want to get under there at that white plastic, but that means I'm going to need to remove some of this plastic here, drill something out. Okay, I need this bar gone, so I'm just going to make sure there's no wires underneath my flush cutters here, and we're going to cut and cut. There's that. All right, there's that piece gone. Just needed some flush cutters. There's like five bucks at Walmart. Unscrewing the screws on the main board. You got four corners. All right. Here's our main board. Hmm. We don't need these nubbins right here. And they might get in the way. A little bit bigger drill bit. I'm gonna drill into it right here. Need to make that bigger. And I was just putting a little bit of horizontal pressure on the drill to move it around almost as if it was a mill, which it is not. And now I can access the screw that's all the way down inside there. Right down in there. And I can also access this one right here. And we're going to unscrew those.
what I'm trying to do is get this piece out and I can feel that it's loosened up a little bit but something is still grabbing in there I see that there is a little tab down in there and we're gonna drill that tab if we can get to it without destroying our board couldn't really show that but this little white piece of plastic is now free to move around in here let's go ahead and get this board out of the way probably should have done that before drilling on that Let's get this plastic out. Yep, this thing's never gonna be the same. We have one more screw left, it looks like, right there. And does it come out yet? Probably not. Probably need this to come off. That's gonna be in the way, I can tell that much. Okay. Got a little bit more room to work there. Let's see if this moves at all. It doesn't wanna move. I wanna get this piece off so that I can get this piece off. Looks like it's a cover piece for this whole assembly to get that white out. So I'm gonna remove this part of the spring action for the gun barrel. Oh boy, that's a good tight one right there. This is a little trick that I taught myself. There we go. All right, now we got a mess of screws here, but what I'm finding is that many of them are the same size, so that makes things easier. Okay, that's out. And we can remove this piece of plastic right here, very nearly entirely. I'm gonna hit it from this side, make sure I'm not on top of any wires, and then we snip. Okay, so that gets that out of the way. And now we've got, oh, we have a wiggly piece right here. That's what we wanna see. I'm just gonna try grabbing that. Ah, oh, look at that right there. Okay. Let's go ahead and get into that. My camera is overheating, so I cannot use the Wi-Fi on it at the same time I'm recording 4K. Recording 4K so that I can zoom in stuff when I want to. It is super hot to the touch. It's only been recording 27 minutes. It's a DJI Osmo. And I have to say I don't recommend it at all. Who would have thought that a $400 camera would overheat? Like it needs a water cooling system. Like it is hot to the touch. They burn up and it's apparently considered normal. So wouldn't buy that. You might consider a, a brand like GoPro. Let's see, is this a plug that we can take out? Come on guy, give it a little more gusto. Bigger drill bit time. All right, now I'm gonna use the drill bit and kind of hold sideways on it. There we go. I'm good at those screws now. I'll tell you what, Bobby. And since we didn't drill those up big enough, they're just gonna kinda stay there. So that's kinda handy. Less screws for me to have to worry about. There's another screw back here holding the LED bar in place. 
And that's probably what we were trying to break a minute ago. Over there. Uh-oh. Something just gave. Okay, that goes there. Just kind of pushing up through the vents. Kind of grabbing on. Let's get the electronicals out of there. Ah. So this screw right here for the clippered valve, that screw is in the way holding it in. So we're gonna unscrew that at least partially. Oh, what do you know? It's a f hex key. I think I've got one of those on this here. What size hex are you? Are you a 2.5 millimeter? Are you my mother? It is a 2.5 millimeter. And I'm just backing that screw out so that we get enough clearance so that I can take this piece out. And I think I've got it now. Does this look disorderly, guys? Does this look like a mess? Okay, so there's another screw down there. The other clippered screw in the, is in the way, so that makes sense too, right? Of course it would be. I'm just unscrewing that, backing it out so that I get the clearance I need. Keeping it intact there. And this should just lift out. I've said that before, right? Okay, there's that piece. All right. And there is our LED bar graph and our vent. So now the vent mod that I want to do is I want to cut this baby off right there. So we're going to do that. The LED bar graph, I wanted to make it darker. This is not exactly what I expected. I feel like there's too much bleed over from the LEDs. And they've got this kind of frosted kind of effect there. I think if I just cut this right there, everything will be just fine. And then the light will shine up through it and everybody will be happy. And so I think that's what we're gonna do. And I would get out a Dremel and make it look pretty, but I frankly really do not care. So we're gonna use flush cutters and flushly cut. Mm hmm yeah. We're gonna show it who the boss is. I do want to have that. Let's get some room in here. Just cutting a little channel. Oh yeah, take a hundred dollar toy and just chew it all up. All right, there goes that piece. All right, so we're cutting out pieces that need screws. So we're gonna have some screws left over now. Not to worry. There we go. Room for the pliers in there. There we go. Vent window deleted. I'm just going to put that back in there and do a bit of a test fit. See how that looks. That, as they say, will do pig. That will do pig. Looking at it from the top, we have clean vent holes. I kind of wanted to make a reflector for it, but I kind of almost don't care at this point. All right, now I'm looking, and I don't see a great way of getting my speaker wire down in all the way through the other side of the tube here. And better man before me have done this. So I'm gonna copy an idea that I saw. And that is that in this space between the grip and the box, uh, drill a hole in line with this grip and then just feed the wire down through and out. And I think that's kind of what we have to do here 
Otherwise, I'm going to have to remove all of this material. So I'm just going to go down straight through that. All right. Close enough for government work. And um, here we go. All right. And it'll be tough to see, but my hole comes out right here on this line, right in the center of, of the grip tube. And it should be just big enough for my wire to fit through. And just push the twisted pair through there. And if it needs to be bigger, we'll just make it bigger. Nope, we got it first time. All right, just feeding that through. I'm gonna hold it in place and kind of sweep it with my screwdriver here. There we go. Okay, so that's what that's gonna look like. It's gonna kind of stick up through there, go into the tube. So I'm gonna drill that all the way through now. And that is what we wanted. Now I just have to get it to come all the way out. I'm gonna feed it through. And it probably will take some coaxing. There we go. I'm gonna leave some slack too, so that I can get my battery pack in there. I should have enough room. Yep. So battery pack just rides over it and that works. Bring out the soldering iron. Some rosin core solder. The kind doesn't really matter all that much. Gonna get my wire stripper and strip these guys we mean just a little bit there we go twist it off watch these expert skills I forgot I gotta get my my soldering iron all juiced up that's called tinning your soldering iron tip is reasonably clean. A little helping hands jig. You don't have to have one of these, but it can definitely help. All right, so I just stick these up in the air like so. I'm gonna work with me, guy. Now I only have to hold two things. All right, heat the work a little bit. And I'm just gonna touch the solder to the work and to the iron. And we're going to turn that silver. And then when we do the contact, it should want to chooch a little bit easier with the other one. Let's go ahead and clean this tip off again. Come on now. There we go. Nice and silvered. Nice silvered tinned, rather, connections. And now we've got two other pads right here. And they've got some goop on them. I'm just going to try and hit that with a soldering iron to get that to de goop. Let's see if we can scratch it off at this point. That's some nasty stuff they got on there. New plan. I'm just going to get the pads clean. You don't want to overheat your work. So you want to be careful about leaving your iron on too long. 
And I'm going to clean it off to make sure that I can get that glue off of the tip. And I'm just doing some light scraping movements to kind of push that molten glue around. All right, there we go. I can see silver right there on that pad. Retin my iron. And I'm blowing out. You want to be doing this in a well ventilated environment. I got a fan running. You should have a fume hood or something like that. Do as I say, not as I do. All right, and we're just going to put a little puddle. And put a little puddle. Okay, so we got two pretty little beads right there. I don't know if they're good solder joints or not, but we're going to test it while it's open. I got a white and blue and I got a blue. I'm just going to pretend that it doesn't matter because it really doesn't. Which is which. All right. Come on. If I can do this, you can do this for the record. Give him a little tug. Give it a little tug. Seems to be on there. I'm not really ready to install this yet, but I want to make sure that it works. So we're going to strip these edges. Now we've got a, one of these is the ground and one is the left and the right because this is a stereo jack. So you got a left and a right and a ground. One of these two is the ground and it's a mono speaker. So we're going to cross the left and the right. So I'm just going to go ahead and just double check if I've got this right. I'm going to fold this over and we know if we get sound, that doesn't sound like crazy demons or something that we got it right. So I'm just going to stick those through the little holes there and I'm just going to do a temporary mock-up. I've got an aux cable. I'll plug in cha like so. And I've got a little boom box here. All right, we got sound. We got it right. It's very loud. I don't have the lights plugged in or anything, but we can. to stay in. So it appears that our little mod worked 
it's not the prettiest and we now have to figure out how to get it back together. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, hit that with a little bit of, all right, I'm gonna jump this one across these two pins. And I have done switches like this before. They heat up very fast. I've done switches of this kind of size before and the plastic on them heats up very fast and then they lose integrity. So we want to be very quick. Give it time to cool off if we need to touch something up. All right, does it still work after we soldered on it? Um, let's double check that, why don't we? We plug in the jack, plug in the stereo, we turn the unit on. Oh yeah. It's on. We're gonna put it on. Super loud. I am very pleased with that. There's no distortion and it sounds even better than with the little speaker if you can imagine. Now I don't know that I heard the little speaker so let's go ahead and try that again. Make sure the little speaker's working. Oh, little speaker still making some little noise. Uh, this is awesome. Well, now we just gotta figure out how we wanna go about all of this mess. We can probably get this main board situated. Main board. Okay, so I can see that being a problem. So I'm gonna put a pull tab on this. Before I start putting stuff back together, I wanna to figure out these wires on the tube. We're not really changing a whole lot of that. That's just to that tactile button there. Not doing a twist mod, because I do not want this to be broken forever. Just, wow, look at that, guys. There are a couple broken strands in there. If I was a smart man, I would go ahead and replace that wire. Okay, so this piece, this piece holds the LED bar down in this orientation. I'm also going to be using it to hold down the wire and keep it out of the way of the emitter bar gun barrel action. So we just drop that LED in there, LED bar in there, and uh, there's kind of a friction fit. Make sure the wires aren't hanging up in the back there and should be just sitting flat like so. We're going to drop this down but not before finding some way to make this stay on top. If there's not enough room, it's gonna stress that board out and I don't wanna do that. So I wanna do this ginger careful. Make sure that wire's out of the way. And it looks like there is just enough room there. 
So that's how that's getting installed on this one. A little bit of wire management. All right, this guy. Okay, so this is the foggy white LED, which should be that. That should be foggy, but it's not on this unit, but foggy white LED and the yellow one goes underneath the vent. With this board, you want the wires facing this way. Put the screw down through the hole on the board. And then there's a place down here. It's gonna be right there that you want that to go into. Guide that down. Now it's probably a good time to tighten up my clippered. And it probably won't tighten up without some counter pressure, so I'm just gonna pull on it. And that's giving me enough resistance to tighten. Do the same on this side. There we go. Snug it down. Snug, snug. You don't want your clipper falling off. All right. I guess now that really all is left is to install this in the cap and deal with this extra wire and deal with the gun tube, which is the thing, is the question of the year. Go ahead and put this piece in. Drop the spring down. Okay. It still works. Now, the way that this tube works is these two screw these two holes fit over the top of this. It's just a fit like that. This goes inside. You've got a rail that needs to line up with those. So this if everything aligns correctly, we just wiggle it so that the holes are there. We twist this so that so that those are there. And then it should all just fall down just like that for that action. But unfortunately, it bends and slams right there. So I'm just going to cut that part of the tube out. That's what we're going to do here. Use the trusty old flush cutters. And we're just going to cut right there. We're going to cut a notch out. We're going to retain... All right, that looks ugly as sin, but everything will be fine. All right, shake out. Let's take a look at the fit here. So the spring goes on top. We need the rail to be aligned with it. So you can see where we made a little bit more room for that wire to go and not get pulled. And I don't like this little corner right here. That's probably causing some issues too. So let's go ahead and remove that corner. Hopefully it doesn't remove too much structural rigidity. There we go. And let's take a look at what we've got to look at here. Okay. So now it looks like there's less interaction overall there. I don't really like that little corner, so that's gonna go away. There we go. Eye protection might be good too. And I don't really like this corner either, so that's gonna go away right about there. There we go. Yeah. Didn't lose too much rigidity, I don't think.
One thing I don't like about this is there's a little bit of play in between the grip handle and the gun barrel. So I'm going to try and fix some of that right here with a little bit of this tape that I used on the grip. It is hockey tape. If you saw my previous video, we just used that to wrap the grip. And I'm going to use it here just a little bit. idea here is just to change the tolerance up and just tighten it up just a hair. And I'm going to do that right here too. Probably don't want that folded on the inside there. You can probably do this with some duct tape or something as well. I'm just going to do this. And guys, get, get a soldering iron because they are so useful. You can just like poke holes and burn stuff that way. I'm not letting it touch the plastic very long at all. Just going through that fabric. But you can poke holes in plastic very easily with it. So that should give me a little bit more fit. Okay, I can already tell you that's going to be a little bit more stiff. And uh, you know we like it stiff around here. So you can see where we cut a, more of a window. I'm going to go ahead and extend that that way. And again, it doesn't feel like I've lost any structural rigidity. And find a hole on the bottom, set that down on in there. Wowie wow. Speaker face is down so that you have your clearance. Come on now. go all right good idea with the tape bad implementation of it we're gonna try it again I barely want to cover that oops William This has to sit down on the inside of that portion there. And I want this wire to be on this side. Yeah, it's crazy how tight the tolerances are with where the wires are and where the pinch points for the wires are. They did not make this to be able to do the twist mod. Do not recommend doing the twist mod. Okay. That will tighten it up significantly. What to do about this little guy right there. I'm going to tell you what we're going to do with that guy. So since I have that little cut right there, we're going to just go ahead and give her a snip. And we're going to give her a strip. And we're going to give this one a strip too. Well, that came right off. I'm going to go just a little bit further than where that cut was with the material. And you can see where we already lost a couple fibers. Fool me once. Again, this is more Cat 6. And just going to cut off a little bit of a link here. And this is more robust wire. It would not have cost them very much to do this. 
we are just going to join the two and we're going to be very careful I am going to solder this but we're going to be very careful with the temperature because these wires are not very robust robusto there we go and do the same up here give it a little tiny tug holds little tiny tug holds uh, we might have just made more problems for ourselves but maybe not I've got an abundance of wire there and we're gonna fit her back in the tube align our holes get that out of there white wire align the holes align the slot and push her down all right and now I don't think that wire is gonna go anywhere I can probably go ahead and connect this back now a little three pin connector right there just press it down and there's a little two pin connector there's a little notch on it so it goes on the back side and I just set it there and push push little one push let's put the batteries in and see if we have lights now turns on light turns on lights on lights on rumbles up our wires getting in the way of the rumble motor in there so we need to make sure to glue that kind of out of the way lights shining up through there and lights are working on our stick all right big flathead screw is for the back one It's almost like it should have been designed like this. I realize I forgot to put this little button in there. Kind of hate that sound effect, but we're going to try and put it back in anyway. That's where that goes. Stupid. So here is the end piece that we're going to attach this through so that we can just connect our aux cable through the back of the wand and uh, plug it in that way there is a phillips head screw here we're going to unscrew that guy and it will remove this little internal piece that's a cylinder to push the battery in to the correct to the correct height This little piece right there. Now we may end up creating our own one of those. There's a large side and a small side. It only goes in this way. I kind of just want to poke a hole through this whole thing with a soldering iron and melt around and get the exact dimension that I need. So I think that's what I'm going to do. So I envision it going right in here like that. 
Just like that. Love soldering irons. So now we've got a hole there and a hole there, and that's kind of where it needs to be now. What I want is for there to be a space cut out. Most of this cylinder gone on one side so that this can live in there. And uh, we're just gonna start doing things to it. Uh, I'm gonna do a little bit of what I like to call solder cutting. It's like on aliens when they start using the, the little plasma cutters they got. Oh man, it looks messy and it is, but it's glorious. It's just like, it just cuts like butter. There's no dust flying everywhere, just smoke. Just glorious, glorious plastic smoke. <sighs> Gotta make sure my fire alarm doesn't go off here. Okay, so you end up cutting some stuff kind of thin, you get a little shmoo, and then we've kind of rough shaped it, shaped it, and I can get in there with my cutters and I can cut this piece out. Can you tell that I like using the flush cutters? They're awesome. I'd like to set up curved flush cutters so that I could kind of get right there and that'd be great. And so you see where we need to go with this. Okay, so now you get this little rim up, you let it cool for a second, and this is what's cool about this. You can just cut it off flush. It's really cool. All right. So this took it way out of dimension. We let it cool for a sec, and then we scrape it off. And now it's flat again. There's a side on these with a couple notches that's so you can use a flathead screwdriver you want that uh, facing that way so that you can maybe tighten it up that way if you need to and I'm gonna stick my pinky finger down in through there to kind of hold that still and I'm gonna try and screw this in from this side yo all right so that is in there
Okay, well, this is what I come up with. A little bit of slack in the wire. The jack sticking through. I don't think that these connections are very much long for this world, but it's what it is. And uh, I went ahead and cut off about a quarter of the threads. And this just sits right down in here like so. I'm going to JB weld that on. And then that will enable me to go ahead and screw this in. And that is that. I'm going to go ahead and close the box up. I'm going to put a little dab of hot glue right in there where the wire comes up through just to keep it off of that motor okay. Okay. give that a little bit of dabity dab right there And keep that white wire down right there keep it out of the action Let's try some hot glue, just for temporary fun's sake. You can always clean that up later. Down in there. Alright, since that glue's not fully chooched yet, we're just going to be nice and gentle with this. Nice and gentle.
go. Nice and loud. Still coming out of the wand. Lights. Our tape there did stiffen the handle up quite a bit. And uh, we've got a, an ox mod. I don't like how you can see down into there. A reflector would be a rather easy modification. I might choose to do that later. But uh, this is how it's gonna sit for, uh, for a little while. You can see the wire down through there. Not a huge deal. But uh, yeah. All right, folks, I think this has been a long enough video. Hopefully this gives you some ideas. It's by no means a... <coughs> This has by no means been a definitive way to do this the prettiest uh, possible, but um, it should give you ideas on how you can do yours, how you can do yours better, and uh, you know, get it done in time for Halloween. All right, guys, thanks uh, for watching Peace, Love, and Guns. Make sure to comment, like, subscribe, and share. Keep on busting. I ain't afraid of no ghost. And you know, give me money on Patreon because reasons. Because you know, that's the YouTube thing to do. Alright guys, thanks and uh, happy Halloween.